Welcome or welcome back to my channel and today's video is the second in a series of videos about retrograde season 2022. If you haven't seen the first one, I would suggest that you go and check it out because there's some general comments at the beginning about retrogrades and retrograde season that I'm not going to repeat here. And that one I also talk about Pluto and Pluto's lessons. Today, we're going to talk about Neptune. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Before we dive into Neptune, I want to show you this image of all of the different planets that are going retrograde during this retrograde season. It happens every summer and uh, sometimes it's just a couple of planets, sometimes it's a whole bunch of them. <laughs> and so the last year we had a big retrograde season, this year we have a big retrograde season. And uh, you, as you can see, we have many, many planets who are going to be overlapping in terms of being retrograde. And that is going to kind of slow things down and potentially feel like we have some obstacles in the way, but it doesn't necessarily have to feel that way if you know how to use this energy. Just as a reminder, the inner planets move faster and they tend to be more personal in their effect on us. The outer planets move much, much, much more slowly and, um, and they're more about the collective. And Pluto and Neptune and Uranus are retrograde a lot, like about 40% of the time, and Saturn about 30% of the time. So they're retrograde a lot. And so a lot of our experience of the energy that these planets are giving us is uh, something that we have direct and indirect. And it, very interestingly enough, Neptune is in a quite a long cycle, all in the gate 36. So I'll go into that in a little bit more detail, but first let's talk about Neptune. You can see here from this image that Neptune is the next planet in from Pluto. So it is the second to the farthest one out. Now, just when you take a look at this image, it's not to scale and it's not uh, that neither the size of the planets nor the orbit. So just know that. But I wanted to kind of show you the order of the planets. Neptune is the god of the sea, right? And the symbol here is the trident, right? And uh, what Neptune is water and emotional and is associated with the subconscious, uh, with uh, psychic abilities, intuition, dreams, both sleeping and waking. Um, and because it has this really watery kind of emotional subconscious quality to it, right? Sometimes it can be confusing. Like sometimes when things come up out of our subconscious, or dreams, for example, sometimes can be very confusing. We don't really know what's going on because different things are associated with different things. And it doesn't really, it definitely does not make any logical sense, right? <laughs> not at all. And so Neptune can have that quality of, of things being kind of confusing, a little murky, a little veiled, um, like hidden to some degree. Uh, or it can also bring clarity when we have better understanding about what's going on. In human design, we talk a lot about Neptune being the spiritual theme in the chart. And so it is about our, our spiritual truth, our spiritual journey, uh, our spiritual purpose, uh, our connection to spirit, uh, how we are living our lives in relation to spirit or not. Right. And so Neptune really highlights all of those themes for us. So during this summer, Neptune's retrograde period is going to go from started at the end of June on June 28th. And it's going to go all the way until early December. And so it's during this period that we are feeling that retrograde. But take a look at this next image, because I've been wanting to highlight that the fact that with these outer planets, there's a much longer cycle that's going on than just the retrograde period. So 
Neptune moved into the gate 36 all the way back in March. Okay, it moved direct into the 36 on March 7th, and it's going to be there for 25 months. It's going to be there all the way through April uh, of uh, 2024. So it's this next two years that we've got a Neptune cycle in the gate 36. So it started out direct and then it's going to retrograde back uh, starting in June of this year, right? And then it's going to go forward in Jan in December. And then it's going to be forward direct all the way until July of next year. And then it's going to retrograde back. And then it's going to go move forward again in December of 2023. And it's going to stay direct until it finally pops into the gate 25 in April of um of 2024. So what does this mean for us? It means that this the that Neptune is really highlighting the energy of the gate 36. And it's saying here, take a look, take a look, take a look. Oh, let's go back and look again. Let's look again. Let's go look again. Let's go look again. Oh, we're going to move forward some new things, maybe some new dreams, some new ahas, some new understandings are going to come in, right? And then we're going to go back and we're going to take another look at them. So it's just going forward and back and forward and back several times over this cycle. So the gate 36 is in the sensing circuit. The sensing circuit is right brained energy. It comes in through the right brain, crosses over, comes down over the left hand side of the body and up through the central channel. And it, it includes the emotional solar plexus, which is what the 36 is coming off of. And it is experiential, it's embodied, it's creative, it's abstract. Uh, it's very connected to spirit, very connected to source. Um, in Jill Bolte Taylor's uh, book, Whole Brain Living, she talks about the emotional theme and the thinking theme of the two sides of the brain. And when she's talking about the emotional theme of the right brain, uh, she's really saying that this is what, what we aim to get to when we do meditation, right? This sense of being connected to the all that is, this great sense of expansion that we are connected to each other, other human beings, that we're connected to the planet, that we're connected to the trees, and indeed that we're connected to the cosmos. So this is a potent aspect of right brain energy. So the 36 definitely has this. The sensing circuit is also called the miracle circuit in quantum human design. And I think the reason uh, that Karen Curry Parker has renamed it the miracle circuit in quantum human design is, is that there is this quality of connecting to the cosmos, connecting to spirit in a very non-logical, non-rational, non-linear way. So the things that come in through it seem like miracles if you're looking at it through a logical lens, or if you're thinking about kind of what we know of from ordinary reality, like physical reality, right? And so they seem like miracles. So there's a quality to all of the energies that are running through the sensing circuit of kind of being surprising sometimes, being um, something that we're not expecting because it's like, oh, that's miraculous, right? So the 36 in traditional human design is known as crisis and in quantum human design is known as exploration. So it is located on the emotional solar plexus. So it is in emotional energy and it's made the 35 connects to con directly to the throat. And so this channel will bring up into the throat some energy to be able to express about emotions and, and our emotional lives. And the 36 is kind of known for being restless. <laughs> it's very interested in experience, but sometimes it can have a hard time settling down into an experience and really feeling it and enjoying it and sticking with it because it's kind of thinking about the next thing it wants to do. And so it's not really present in the experience that it's already having. 
And so one of the things with that, and that can create a crisis, right? Because you're kind of all over the place. You're not really present. You might not really even be in your body, right? Because everything in the sensing circuit is embodied. But if you're not present and you're always thinking about the future and you're not paying attention to where you're at right now, you're probably not in your body, right? You're kind of future tripping, right? You're projecting things into the future and you're not even paying attention to what's happening right now. So that is a, a, a challenge that you can have with the gate 36. The 36 has desire. It's wanting, right? It's this, this energy that is wanting experience. It wants to feel. It wants to be emotional. If we can capture this, right? And if we can direct it where we want it to, then it can be very beneficial for us. But the thing is, is you have to know what you want. Like just wanting is kind of like a hungry ghost, right? Like there's nothing that's going to satisfy it if it's just wanting, 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 right? Longing, longing, longing. It's like, you know, a bucket with no bottom, right? As you just put it in and it goes right out. But when you do know what you want, and you know, unfortunately, I have to say, I have worked with many, many clients who come to me, they're kind of like, I don't really even know what I want. And that's often because they have been living in a really kind of conditioned and programmed way. And they've done the things that they were taught to do to become successful, to get happy, you know, to have a family, to have a career, whatever those things are, right, that they were taught. And they get to a point where they're like, you know, this isn't really giving me everything that I want. I can feel that there's a gap. I can feel that there's a lack. I can feel like I'm out of alignment in some way. But the truth is, is I don't really know what I want. I haven't given it that much attention in my life because I've just been kind of trying to follow this path that was laid out for me or that I even created for myself based on what I thought I wanted when I was younger. And now I'm getting to this point where I'm like, I'm not really sure that that's what I want. I do experience younger people more and more now wanting to get more in touch with what they want earlier on. I think that's a really good thing because a lot of them are not buying into so much of the programming and the conditioning. They're seeing the challenges that their parents have gone through. They've seen challenges that are happening in the world. So sometimes they have a greater sense of what it is that they want. And I think that's awesome. And if you're one of those people, you know, good for you. And let's remember that this is emotional energy, right? It's emotional. It's on the emotional solar plexus. And anytime we have emotional energy in the human design chart, we know that we need to be patient. We need to give some time for clarity because emotions, especially if you're emotionally defined and you have an emotional wave, you need to have some time to get clear about things so that you're not overly influenced just by the wave that you might feel like it's kind of a baseline change in moods that you have. And so you want to be able to give yourself time with emotional energy to get clear because otherwise you can be in that confusion that we were talking about in relation to Neptune tune before, right? So here we've got like a watery, fluid, subconscious planet that's lighting up emotional energy <laughs> about wanting, right? So there's, it's kind of layered on how important it is for us to be patient here. And the 36 really needs to learn how to stick with something, you know, to be able to hang in there long enough to get the benefit of it. And part of that is learning to be present. It's learning to actually be paying attention to what's happening in your life right now and not just spacing out or daydreaming uh, or future tripping, right? Or finding yourself too caught in the past, right? It's about being able to be present here, to notice what's happening, to have your senses alive, to be able to hear what's happening, to see, to feel, to smell, to taste, all of that. Uh, because we have a lot of unconscious patterns, right? We have a lot of uh, unconscious eating, right? You're sitting there watching television, you know, shoving food in your mouth. You don't even realize you go to the movies, the whole bag of popcorn is gone. You don't even know how that happened, <laughs> right? There's can be a lot of unconscious eating, for example. So we want to really be paying attention and sticking with something so that we can get the benefit of the experience that we're having right now. Being present right now makes it much easier to stick with things uh, because it's the kind of, you know, I wanted, I wanted it yesterday, I wanted it last year. 
<laughs> that kind of thing that can just pop you out of being present. But if you're actually here and you're paying attention to something and you're looking for what, where's the pleasure that you can have? right? Where's the emotional tone that brings you some joy when you're sticking with something and you're staying with it and you're finding out what, what really what it is and you're, you're going to go deeper with it, right? That's what you want to cultivate with this 36. When you do that, it's much easier to be patient to wait for right timing. And you want to use your authority, whatever your human design authority is, to help you discern when right timing is going to come. There are a number of different authorities, and so you need to know what your authority is. And you can go and watch my video about the human design authorities to, to find out what yours is. And also in my uh, ebook series, uh, Transform Your Life with Human Design, I go into to a lot of depth with that. And I will put that up at the end of the video and the link where you can go and get it if you want it. So you want to use your authority to tell you, is this the right time? Is it the right time to engage? Is it the right time to complete? Uh, is the right time to move forward with something? Is it the right time to disengage? Whatever that is. So during this whole Neptune cycle uh, in the 36, you have the opportunity to be di digging in deep into what it is that you want. What are your dreams? Um, and are you staying with practices or projects or possibilities long enough for them to bear fruit for you? Uh, and do you, especially during the retrograde um, times, you know, maybe go deeper inside, like go back inside of yourself and check out what is it that, may, that you've longed for that maybe you've put aside, you know, you just kind of shoved it over. You aren't giving it any attention because you thought it wasn't practical. You thought it wasn't realistic. You thought it was impossible. You thought it was inappropriate, right? Whatever the things are that your conditioning or your programming told you about what it is that you really longed for. And to see if you can kind of pull it out of deep storage and dust it off and check out what your passion might be around that. Um, because, you know, if it's something that you really do still have some fire around, this is a good time to be bringing it up and giving it some more attention. Because Neptune is going to be giving you some access to that subconscious, to those dreams, to the things that maybe, you know, have gotten a little murky for you, but actually uh, you really, really desire. And as you're doing this, you want to be fluid, right? Because Neptune's the god of the ocean, but you don't want to be wishy-washy, right? Which is that restlessness. That's kind of the downside of this. The 36 does well with a kind of container for all of that energy, especially with Neptune lighting it up because you don't want it just all to flow out all over the place, right? <laughs> like water does if it's let go of a dam. You, you really want to have a container for it so you can direct this energy where you want to. You want to just be paying attention to what it is that's happening now and be fully involved with that, but then also be able to resurrect <laughs> if necessary some desires or longings or wantings that are experiential for you and that would help your creativity and your ability to connect into that cosmic energy that can allow you to really download more from from super consciousness so that you can be feeling greater possibilities than maybe whatever you know the over culture is telling you or what your conditioning or your programming has told you in the past now let's think about this for a moment about how this is influencing the collective because i've been talking about this so far about how it can be influencing you and it does influence you but it's also influencing everyone around you the whole theme about what are our dreams and our desires what's in the subconscious that needs to be attended to what is it that we have shunted aside because of our privileging of the logical mind and we thought things weren't possible what can we start bringing up more? And I think this is a great energy for us to be using around creating new stories, new narratives, new possibilities, new projects, new communities uh, for developing our new world. 
right, that we're really longing for. I love what Charles Eisenstein named one of his books, The More Beautiful World Our Hearts Know Is Possible. And so what is that more beautiful world that your heart knows is possible? And that Neptune shining in the 36 can help bring this out. And I think that this is happening for a lot of us in the collective. And we're just really in the beginning of this Neptune cycle. Remember, it's 25 months long. And we're only, we started in March, right? So we're only a few months into it. So this is going to be going on all the way until April of 2025. So you have a lot of time to be working with this energy of the 26, sorry, the 36. And you just want to watch out for get you know getting too restless getting too watery getting too emotional not being patient um you know wanting things like like this because a lot of that can lead to a kind of despair because what happens when you don't allow yourself to fully receive an experience that you're having is you start to feel hollow inside like really empty in there because it's almost like no matter what you do you just don't feel whole you don't feel complete you don't you, you don't feel the joy you don't feel the excitement you don't get the benefit of what you can really get from your experiences if you're not actually present when you're having them right and so it can be a challenge with neptune because it is prone to confusion it is prone to being overly emotional or being like i said a little veiled or a little you know covered over a little hidden like i said before my invitation to you is just to maybe be journaling about this really paying attention or to do some collaging for yourself get images because again this is a creative energy right it's right brain energy so it's creative or maybe you want to do some paintings like you know, I love to do my paintings, right? Maybe you want to do some painting, just something that helps you get that creative flow going. Because when you do that, sometimes things pop in, you get an awareness that pops in because you've opened up that right brain energy. And it is really coming in from the cosmos. Okay, so that's my video about Neptune and the Neptune retrograde. And I hope you will stay tuned for the rest of the videos in this series. The next one up is Saturn. Okay, many blessings. Much love. Bye for now.